Tonight, for a little while, we're going to discuss the power of the blood of Jesus. <laughs> yes, the power of the blood of Jesus. Praise God. We're going to start in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 7. The power of the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9 verse 7. Hebrews 9 verse 7. Have somebody read that, please. Hebrews 9, verse 7. You want to read that? Okay. Thank you. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The only part I want you to recognize out of Hebrews 9, and verse 7 the priest would not even go into the Holy of Holies, mm-hmm. not without blood. Right. It's the blood that causes the remission of sins. So the, even the priests before Jesus, they wouldn't even think of going into the Holy of Holies and commit something unto God, not without blood. Because they were told that the blood will cleanse you from all your sins. So they went in there with the blood from generations. Well, let's put it this way. From Genesis through Revelations, it goes on and on over and over about the blood and the blood and the blood and the blood. Some people have never sat down and actually written out or looked at how often it mentions the blood of the lamb or the blood of the sacrifice or the blood of the... But hundreds of times it's mentioned in the Bible. Uh And it's sometimes we take it for granted. We... We think, well, I'm going to plead the blood or call out for the blood, but we need to understand what the blood is doing for us. So our eyes need to see the fullness of the of the sacrifice that's laid before us. I'm talking about sacrifices from Abel. There was a sacrifice of blood. From Noah, the sacrifice of blood. From, from Isaac, the sacrifice of blood. And even the Passover lamb, there was sacrifice of blood. We've got to understand all that was symbolism for the cleansing and purification that was to come through Jesus Christ. The blood is a sign of the impartation of His love to us because there's life in the blood. There's life in the blood. Right. Now, having a degree in science, I used to study blood. As a matter of fact, I was the director of a blood center for years. And my job was to analyze the blood and look at the blood, develop the blood, walk over the blood, take care of the blood. A lot of things happened to that. So much so that a minister friend of ours, he came to me and said, could you tell me about the blood? Before he wrote his first book on the blood speaks. Mm -hmm. And so he sat down and did a long interview about the blood and what the blood does and how it does it. So tonight I'm going to give you just a little bit of insight on to the conversations we had about the blood and what they do. Uh-huh. Now, we have redemption through that blood. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians 1 and verse 7. In Ephesians 1 and verse 7. Somebody see if you can find that. I'll let you read it. Ephesians 1 and verse 7. You want to read that one? Sure. Okay. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Yes, the Bible very clearly promises us that we have redemption through the blood. Now, Adam sinned, and when he did, he turned all of the authority that he had over to the devil. Because he was given authority over all the earth. He was given authority over everything. Everything that even creeps on the earth. But he turned it over when he sinned. And God's plan has been redemption by the blood from the beginning. It was his plan. That's exactly what he promised. Jesus' blood washed away our sins. He said, I've come to wash away your sins. In Galatians chapter 3, it says in verse 13... 
Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us Mm -hmm. from the curse of the law. Very clearly, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That's us, <laughs> through Christ Jesus. And that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. He's already told us. That's what exactly I've called for you. I've <clears throat> called for this to happen to you. Now, you've got to understand in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, that was Adam, Because the sin came in by him, and all with it death through sin, thus death spread to every man because all have sinned. So we got that same curse. That's why we're redeemed from the curse, because the curse came on us through everyone receiving it by one sin. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, we have fellowship with him through the blood. Some people don't see that, but you need to see Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. In Hebrews 10, 19, it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holies by the blood of Jesus. It's his blood that allows us to get into the holy of holies. He, he, he gave us the opportunity to get in. It is so important. So the fellowship, we've got to understand, is something that many most people understand this, but you need to see this. The fellowship is closeness with God. Now, if you have fellowship with someone here on the earth, that means you're close to that person. If you go out to eat with them, you have fellowship with them. You go to their house, you have fellowship with them. It's tough to have fellowship with someone you don't spend any time with because you're not having fellowship. You have a relationship, but you don't have any fellowship. So, and the scripture says clearly, we have fellowship with him. Mm-hmm. We have fellowship because we can get into the Holy of Holies exactly where he is. And we can talk with him. And we can share with him. I go in there and, and ask him all the time for help. How about you? Right. We go into the Holy of Holies because we have closeness with him. Now, this closeness that we carry with him was bought for us with the price. Sin separated us from the precious fellowship that we have, and only the blood of Jesus allows us to get back into the Holy of Holies. Because of the power of the blood, Jesus boldly gave us the opportunity to enter into the throne room once again. He said, this is where you're supposed to go, into the throne room of God. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21... 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for our behalf, so that we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to Him and placed in a right relationship with Him by His gracious loving kindness. He promised that. He said, this is what you're supposed to do. In other words, we have fellowship with them when we have, and we do this every month in communion. Mm-hmm. It's just to remind us you have fellowship with him. Right. It says, he says, you can take this and when you do, do it in remembrance of me. Because we're not always before him, but this is our method. We take communion so that you can recognize you're in the presence of God. Amen. Let's recognize it. I think people ought to carry an emergency communion kit. I think you ought to have it hanging around your neck so that when you need a wafer and you need to to recognize the blood, you can call that out. We take communion and even say in the communion, this is the blood of Christ. And the reason we do that is because we can have fellowship with him. When we do that, we have fellowship with him. Now, we have fellowship through the blood and we have been told by the Lord that this blood opens us up into a better relationship with Him because we continually have fellowship. Now, there's more to understanding the fullness of blood than what I've 
spoken to you so far. I've given you some general ideas. But do you understand how the blood works in your body? And this is where my friend talked with me, and he said, well, I, I, I appreciate what you're telling me about the Lord, but I know about the Lord. I want to know how this blood works in your body. I said, well, I'm glad you asked. Because you've got blood that flows in your body all the time. It's continually rebuilding cells. It's continually bringing oxygen to your brain so you can think. It's continually going down all kinds of capillary beds so it can reach all the nerve endings. Anybody ever had a time when your fingers didn't quite feel right Mm -hmm. or your feet didn't quite feel Mm -hmm. right? What it's saying is your blood can't reach it. The blood had difficulty. Anybody ever run real hard and then all of a sudden you have pain in your leg? You're like, whoa, that's pain. Because you have a, a, a certain type of anguish from your skin that can't get recovered fast enough because the blood can't get the oxygen there quick uh-huh. enough. And so it goes through pain. And you've got to understand, the reason we are made is in the image of God with the blood of the lamb flowing through us, we have his blood. We are made in the like. Jesus came so that he could live in a human body and experience everything that you experience. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're subject to, the Bible says, he was also subject to. Mm -hmm. And so the reason the blood goes through the body is so that it has fellowship with every part. Mm -hmm. It continually renews things in your body. Your eyeballs couldn't see well if blood didn't continue to flow to them. Mm -hmm. Your ears couldn't hear well. Your mouth couldn't be well without the blood flowing through there all the time. There's life in the blood. blood. There's life in the blood. Mm -hmm. And this is something we need to recognize. If we're going to stand before the Lord, and talk with him, our fellowship with him allows life from the heavenlies to be in us. Because we are going before the throne and we have fellowship with him, the same as fellowship with the blood. We are the blood of Christ on the earth. He's not flesh and blood anymore. He's been made a holy being. Mm -hmm. He's sitting next to the throne of God. We are filled with his spirit. Mm -hmm. I've had people say, well, I'm I'm filled with Jesus. Okay, I mean, there, it's, a slight, it's a slight play on words there, but the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says, I sent the Holy Spirit to live in you uh-huh. and be in you in the book of John. It says, I sent him to be with you and in you. Right. And so Jesus is sitting at the right-hand seat of God. The Bible says he's right at the right-hand throne of God. But his Spirit lives in us, and we are his blood because we're his body. We are his blood here. We have fellowship with him because the blood was made in the same manner it was with Jesus, washing away sins. It's washing away all impurities from our body all the time. Amen. And we've got we to gotta recognize this. Now, there's healing in the blood. Yes. <clears throat> the Bible promises Amen. healing, total healing, healing <clears throat> in the blood. According to Isaiah 53, it says this, in Isaiah 53... It gets to verse 5 and says it like this. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. Now he took this pain in his own body so that we might be healed. Jesus sacrificed and it covered every area of healing some people say well you know I'm still dealing with that the Bible says Jesus sacrificed his death on the cross his blood shed and the stripes on his back was for every type of healing there's no healing that you can't get by his blood that's right amen that's right Now, Jesus sacrificed so that you would be free from sin, mental anguish, worry, cares, sorrow, fear, and every other kind of disease or iniquity. It was all washed away by the blood. 
Now the blood flows through your body to look for any impurities. Mm -hmm. It's searching out anything that's not of God, anything that's not there on purpose that God didn't ordain it. He's looking for it, and the blood has a tendency to grab it, and the white corpuscles that are in your blood are there specifically to find diseases and or cells that are not normal and destroy them. Right. It's done by the white corpuscles. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you may not know that, but now you know. So it goes through your body, and they're in your blood, and it's looking for things that are not right, and they'll get rid of them. That's why whenever you have a problem in your body, dealing with pneumonia or anything else, they say, well, their white count is up, because even doctors and nurses know that the white cells are there to destroy any problem that's in your body. Right. So it's fighting any infection, anything that's not of God. Mm -hmm. It's to be rooted out. And it's God pre-planned yes. all the blood to flush your body all the time of impurities. That's so really even, cool. That's yeah, wonderful. That's really yeah. cool because if you think about it, your body was created to already heal itself. Heal itself. Yeah. So that's why when people say, well, healing's just not for today. Well, that's a lie because Because it's still being healed. God... Mm -hmm. He created us to be like that. He created us to be healed. Yeah. He made it so that we it's could continually thing. flush mm -hmm. our body out. It, it goes, when your body stops working right, it's when it won't flush out the problem. Yeah, that's right. And that's when you've got to go get help. To get, but see, even getting help, people said, well, we believe in God. I understand. I believe in God, and he had ordained doctors, mm -hmm. and so... If doctors are going to help with the healing, a healing still comes from God. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll stand in faith first. But let me put it like this. When my son broke his arm, I prayed. And when I didn't see it immediately healed, I went and got it set. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Now, some people say, well, we're just believing God. Well, okay, me too. But God ordained the doctors. They don't even know why it's happening they don't know how it does it, exactly how it does it. Well, I can tell you, it's still God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. It's still God. God's the, He is the great miracle worker. <coughs> now, blood, when it's applied to its fullness, he, God has given us power in that blood. He said the healing power flows through your blood. Failing to understand the power of the blood has kept some people from receiving the fullness of God. You have the power in your blood. It's already been laid in you. It's to renew you. Some folks that are dealing with all little things, a lot of stuff, you need to continue to call out for the blood of God, the, the power in that blood to heal you, to take care of you. Power in that blood. Now, not only did he give us the fullness of power, but 1 Corinthians 11, when it gets to 29, it says it like this in 1 Corinthians 11, it starts in 29. It's talking about communion one more time. And it says, for he that eats and drinks communion unworthily eats and drinks damnation unto himself. Why would that be? If God provided healing for us, why then would there be some problem to be a problematic cause whenever we eat or drink the communion unworthily? He said, I want you to ask for forgiveness of sins. That's why your blood is being renewed. Because the blood is there to forgive you of all sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. You'll notice whenever I receive communion, I always say, let's pray and ask God to forgive us. God forgive us for any sin that we've ever committed so that we don't take of it unworthily. And the Bible says, don't take of it unworthily. Then it says, because when you do, you're not discerning the Lord's body as powerful as it should be. You don't discern the Lord's body. That's why the Bible says there are some weak and sick among you because they don't recognize the fullness of the power of the blood. So then they walk in that sickness and they say, well, I'm believing God. It's more, it's more than just that because you can say you're believing God, but your believing in God requires action to stand in faith. You say with your heart, I'm believing God. It's different than saying, well, you know, I'm believing God. Well, yeah, that's going to work. You've got to believe God. 
It's important to stand steady and believe God. Now, the Bible says there's protection through the blood of the Lamb. There's protection by His blood. In Exodus 12, Oh, by the way, when you come to a Bible study, I'll just be all over the Bible. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll take you from one end to the other sometimes. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 12, it says it like this. For I will pa- pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt... I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, what protected those folks? I'm talking about the Israelites. What protected those people from the death angel that was loosed upon that? uh, The entire nation was loosed with this death angel. God did not stop it. The death angel came from hell and he was loose to kill the firstborn, but God already gave them exactly what they needed to do to have protection. He said, all you need to do, lather the blood across your door. When there's blood on the door, the death angel cannot go in. The blood will protect all the people in it. He cannot enter into that door. That door needs to be covered with blood. He has to go somewhere else because that is the sign that I'm in that house. And so when you recognize the fullness of the blood, you recognize the fullness of the power of the blood, you also recognize the protection of the blood. And the devil has got to yield to the protection of God when you call out the blood. That's why you call out, I decree the blood. I'm calling on the blood of the Lamb. I declare the blood is healing my body. You declare that blood is working on you. Mm -hmm. Because this protection that's through the blood, because after nine devastating, I'm talking about plagues that hit all the land, Egypt was filled with those plagues. I don't care what plagues came, whether it be flies or frogs or the water turning to blood. I didn't phase them at all. They just went through and went through and went through. But the final plague that came was when he said, I'm going to smite the firstborn. Your firstborn will die. And told Pharaoh that, well, that was no big deal until they, until they started losing all their firstborn. Both the children and the animals, the firstborn of the children and the animals, all died. And so with that, in Revelation 13, it gets to verse 8 and says it like this. And all that dwell upon the earth will worship, will worship it. Everyone whose name has been, has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of which the Lamb was slain. If you understand this, it says that blood of the Lamb, this blood that was shed through the, the dying of Jesus, has put your name in a book that says you will make it into heaven. This is the book of the Lamb. You are protected by the blood of the Lamb. And He was slain for the world. His blood is inexhaustible. His blood is never ending. And by the blood of the Lamb, we defy and stand strong against every curse that tries to come up against us. Mm -hmm. When you speak the name or when you plead the blood, Mm -hmm. you have decreed, I understand its power. (coughs) I know that name. I decree its power. Listen, when when you wheel something like that, it's like a king sitting on a throne and he's got a scepter. And he says, I decree, (laughs) I decree. And you become an authority over the devil just because you know the Savior lives in you. By his blood, by the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb, this gives you the power over the enemy and gives you protection. In other words, you have all authority over the devil by the blood. It's like when you draw the bloodline around property your belongings, or another person. Amen. It, the devil can't cross that. Cannot. Because he can't it's touch the blood. It's the same as the, as the yeah. 
the doorpost being lathered with blood. Right. He, can't he cannot enter. It's, it's been touching. decreed unto the Lord. Right. And I'm telling you, there's a powerful thing when we do that. Right. Now, understand the fullness of authority that's been given to you. You need to understand this. You have authority by the right. blood of the Lamb. There's a way to overcome the devil. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, it gets to verse 11, says it like this. In Revelation 12, it gets to verse 11, says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. And the word of their testimony. Do you know why we take a few minutes every week and we talk about something good? Because we spend way too much time rehearsing what's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing on people's mind. We see somebody that's got a little bit of disdain in their face or a little squint in their eye. We say, what's wrong? We don't go around saying, oh, name three things that are right. (laughs) But we could turn the situation around. We overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb. We got to understand the authority we yield because we carry that blood. We are the authority on the earth. We carry the blood, the holy blood of Christ. We carry it in us. We carry the blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony is powerful. It's the way to overcome the devil. The Bible says you overcome the devil. You overcome the devil by this blood and the word of your testimony. Because the devil knows the power of the blood. Yes, he does. You carry that power. You carry that power. Yes. And he will do anything. The devil will do anything to try to make sure you don't recognize the fullness of that power. He'll make you doubt. Mm-hmm. He'll try to get you to feel uncomfortable. He'll, when you've been declaring God's power, and then he'll say, oh, you quit saying that in front of all these people. Don't you know that you, you're embarrassing yourself? You're talking so loud. Come on, all of us have been there. I've been in, in places where we're all going to sit down and eat a meal, and somebody says, uh, well, I'll say the prayer. Father, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I get my spoon, I'll, I'll, I'll ding on the cup, and I'll say, let's, let's all pray. And everybody in the restaurant bows their head. It's like, because they're just waiting for somebody to take their authority. The power's in the blood. Why are we so squeamish when it comes to standing up for God? Because the devil's done everything he can to make us feel like it's an embarrassing thing. There are certain things we don't talk at relatives' houses, right? <laughs> Certain things we don't talk at. One of them is politics. Come on, we know that. We don't talk <laughs> politics because some of your folks are not the same political party as us and we don't talk about any religion. Yeah. Because, oh, far be it that I should try to get you saved and go to heaven so that when you die you don't end up in hell. And some folks, they think that's a huge... you you really messed up my meal because you brought Jesus in. And that was the way well, my, my mother-in-law was like that. Oh, what? my goodness. And my mother-in-law you wouldn't talk about it. Messed up my meal. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're, we're trying to have a regulation, just a plain old time, just to enjoy ourselves and all that woman. Talk about Jesus Christ, Him crucified. I'm working at a church for Heaven's sake. I just don't want to talk about Him right now. I want some meat. I, I don't just a sip it. Just bread. Stop it, woman. This is no time to talk about that Jesus stuff. And she would not. She's relentless in her conversation. I, oh, it just makes me angry. She want to come visit and stay at your house. Oh, she just, <laughs> she just came here. Honey, that was last year. What? <laughs> Please. Okay, she'll stay. Boy, she showed up. All she talked about was Jesus this and Jesus that. And I had the Bible open all the time. I said, look, I go to, I, I own the, I, I'm a member. I, I work at the church, woman. And all she talked about was Jesus. And one day she prayed in tongues. I said, what's that? She said, that's holy. I'm going home. You guys have disrespected me. It's been rude. I'm leaving. She walked out the door and she praying in tongues. I said, wait, 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 wait. What's that? She said, I told you. I was praying in tongues. I said, I know. How do I get that? She said, well, let me show you the scripture. I said, get, 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 get. don't give me all that scripture stuff. I don't need all that. Just tell me how to do that. 
she tried to lead me through the scriptures over and over and over and over. And I, she, I said, no. And finally she said, okay, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I said, yes. You, you really want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I said, yes. She began to pray in tongues. She said, repeat it after me. <laughs> That's it. And I began to repeat after her. And I got lost in the Spirit. I'd been saved a long time, but I didn't know there was more to God. I, I hated to just talk about Jesus. You wouldn't talk about him on a bus ride. You surely couldn't talk about him, you know, on a on a, one of them group boats when you go out to go fishing. You can't talk about Jesus all the time. And that woman didn't know that. And she talked about Jesus in my house. My house. <laughs> And I really got saved. <laughs> I got spirit filled. Because that Jesus turned out to be something I didn't know. I, I, I knew of him. But I didn't know him. So my life changed. By the blood. By the blood. And the blood of Jesus has enormous power that God is willing to give us as we need to stand. He said, I'm going to give you power to stand. I'll give you more than you need. Where we miss it, sometimes as we think, we tell people, oh, pray for me, pray for me. I don't mind praying. Because I like when people will have prayers. I can add to their prayer. That's, that's, a, that's a scripture. It says agreement in prayer. That's a scripture. When people say, add to it, like we used to do in our old church, we say, we'd start out real good. And we'd say things like, you know, I want you all to pray for me because I'm going through so much. It's just a terrible. And we'd go on for hours about what's wrong. Mm-hmm. And people finally, they just go, he's just such a mess. And they, they, they'd spread all that around. Instead of standing strong with you in the Lord, they'd talk to you, talk about you when they get home. Right. And so I found something out that you got to stand in the truth of the word. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, you got to speak the word. You got to talk the word because the word is what works. Mm-hmm. It's not about your. I, hey, I'm not opposed at all to finding out what you need prayer for. But once we've heard it, let's talk about what you thank God for. Yes. Amen. You got to declare the truth in your life. That's right. Faith must be in the blood because when it is, it produces great results. Right. Now, I've given you a couple of insights into what the blood does in your body. But before we go any further, I want to tell you about how this life is renewed by the blood. So let me explain that. In Leviticus 17 and verse 11, Leviticus 17 and verse 11, it says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. That's in the Bible. We know that when you, when you go into scientific study and do any kind of biological study, we know life is in the blood. But the Bible, this is before scientists started coming up with all this stuff. The Bible says in Leviticus, which is one of the first books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, it was written as a five Pentateuch, it was the Pentateuch, the five books of the Bible written by Moses while it was being interpreted to him from God. So he wrote down all that and one thing he wrote in Leviticus 17, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Wow. That's before they even started doing any microscopic study. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, it was a Holy Ghost revelation. It was a Holy Ghost revelation. For the next few minutes, I want to give you some attributes of the blood. I know this is a little bit different than our regular studies. I just give you uh, lots of different areas. But I, I was so moved by the Spirit of the Lord when he said, I want you to share some things about the blood because not enough people call out for the blood. They don't plead the blood. They don't stand on the blood. And they're suffering because of it. The blood is power. Now, attributes of the blood. Number one, 
It's an agent of purification in our body by the blood. Now, we talked about the purification, but you need to see this in Hebrews 9 and verse 11. It says, indeed, Hebrews 9 and verse 11, indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified by the blood. Right. That's in Hebrew. Your body is purified by the blood. Now, listen to me. Just as the body has blood flowing through its entire system, it's going through every, it's going through every crevice. It's got to have blood circulating in there. If the blood doesn't touch a particular part, that part dies. So if you don't have the blood of the lamb touching every part, that part dies. It won't function spiritually. What scripture was that? Now this is found in 22. Hebrews 9.22. 9, 9, 9, 9.22. Everything is purified by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Okay. Blood moves through our body looking for products that are not of God, any waste products that need to be removed, and continually brings them out and moves them away from our body. The cleansing power of the Lord's blood purifies our spirit. And the purifying, the cleansing power of the Lord purifies our spirit. The cleansing power of His blood purifies our spirit. It's continually re-cleansing us from all unrighteousness. We need to let His Spirit be prominent in our lives. Now think about it. Don't have to raise your hand or say, that's me or oh my. But listen. According to the Word, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I have preached this, even in my early years, that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I've had people tell me, well, I used to be a sinner, but now I'm saved by grace. Well, i got news for you. The devil is always working to get you to sin. Mm -hmm. We sin with our thoughts. We sin with our actions. We sin with our mouth. We sin with our unforgiveness. We, we, oh my. Even the Bible says if you're out of faith, you're into sin. sin. Anything not of faith faith is sin. And we do it continually. Don't you know the devil is trying to get you out of faith all the time? He wants you to be in fear and anguish and torment. He wants you to stay away from knowing the power of God. He wants to keep you in the dark when it comes to understanding the fullness of God. But the cleansing power of the Lord's blood purifies your spirit. He's there to recognize and to bring you back into full control. You don't have to walk in sin. Why would you think Jesus said, go and sin no more if it wasn't possible? Hmm. Because he was saying, go do something that's impossible. It must be possible. Right. However, we all, if we had to raise our hands, we'd say, have you sinned since you got saved? We'd say, yes. <laughs> now, how do we do that? Because we've been tempted mm-hmm. by the devil. The devil even tempted Jesus, mm-hmm. but he did not sin. Right. So, yeah, he's going to tempt us. He's going to do everything he can to try to get us to be ripe in sin so that we will never ripen under righteousness. And he'll bring back the same areas that you sinned in years and years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And you say, why does he do that? Because that's why it's called the wiles of the devil. The Greek word wiles is the word methods, methodios. It's two Greek words, method and odos. Method means with And odos is the same root word that we get odometer. It means road. He knows exactly what road to go down to get you. Mm -hmm. 
and you fall on that same road. You don't know why you keep falling, but you fall on that same road. You fall on that same road. How many have ever read the scripture where Jesus said, if you see your ox or your donkey fall into the ditch on the Sabbath, which one of you would not get him out? Because they were chiding him for doing things on the Sabbath day. And he said, of course, you'd get your ox or your donkey out on the Sabbath. However, if your ox keeps falling in the same ditch on the Sabbath, you either need to get a new ox or take a different route. (laughs) Because you either got a stupid ox (laughs) or you're subject to the fall. Mm -hmm. Why do we still go down that same road? Because it's familiar. We entertain the roads of sin. Because we feel sorry for ourselves sometimes. It's the biggest discussion. It's the biggest disgusting thing we could do against God is to feel sorry for ourselves. And we then sin. When we feel like somebody doesn't know us, somebody doesn't take care of us, somebody doesn't know what I'm going through, we feel so sorry for ourselves, we sin. And people say, really? Really? Because if we feel like somebody doesn't know what I'm dealing with, somebody doesn't see what I'm going through, somebody doesn't care what I'm dealing with, well, then we start to feel sorry for ourselves. Our wife doesn't look after us right. Our husband doesn't care about us. (laughs) He's not showing me enough love. We feel sorry for ourselves, so we feel anger is okay. We feel holding a grudge might be all right. Our relatives won't take care of us in the proper way. We can't get them to do what we want them to do. They will not listen. They're disrespecting us. Fine. Then I'm going to hit you. <laughs> and we say, well, we won't say it in front of people, but that's what's going on in our mind. Are you with me? Uh-huh. Because the devil knows exactly what road to go down to get you. Uh-huh. And we have a tendency to go down the same road Usually because it's familiar. If things happen to us, they're happening today in the same manner they've always happened to us. And we need to take a time and say, that's it. Once and for all, here's the bloodline. I won't do that again. Now, we've said that sometimes about certain things. And then when the time comes, we go, I mean it this time. I will not do that again. Now, let me ask you a question. How many are tempted to walk on the moon? There's no one in this room that says, I want to walk on the moon. That's a temptation of mine. That's because it's impossible. They're not going to call you from NASA and say, guess what? Next week you're an astronaut on the moon. It's not going to happen. Uh, Listen, I know the people at NASA. I'm a good man. I'm going to tell you, they're not going to call you. (laughs) But we, because it's not a temptation, so we're dead to it. But the things we're not dead to, we can be revived to go down that road again where the ox falls in the ditch. Now somebody said, well, I have a friend that was on drugs, off of drugs, on drugs, off of drugs, on drugs, off of drugs. And, and we all say, boy, that's, why can't we just stop that? Because it's their road. Mm -hmm. Why can't you stop gossiping? It's your road. Why can't you stop hating? It's your road. Why don't you stop being angry? It's your road. I'm going to... Because of the blood, I want to encourage you. Find a new route. (laughs) (laughs) Put up the bloodline and say, I'm not going to go down that road anymore. That's it. The barriers are up. And not only can you not go down there, Satan can't go back and make you go down that road. Mm -hmm. Amen. You go down the road because you chose. And then he pushes you. Amen. He can't make you go down that road if you already put up the barrier and said, no, I won't go down there. That's that. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember a young man came to me years ago. He said, Would you pray for me that I'll stop smoking? He's just a kid. He's a young man in a youth group. 
He said, pray for me to stop smoking. And I took his hand and I prayed. And I said, well, I, I do pray for you. I said, I pray you get sick as a dog every time you smoke a yeah. cigarette. Yeah. He said, don't pray that. I said, too bad, done prayed. I said, every time you get a pack of cigarettes out, you're going to get sick, sick, sick. Man, I'm talking about throwing up sick. I'm talking about sick. And you know what happened to him? He got sick when he was smoking that. He got so sick, he said, I got to stop that stuff. That man done prayed for me. I'm going to get sick like a dog. You know, there's something about throwing down the bloodline that stops people from entertaining that again. Because see, if you've done it before, the devil knows you're susceptible to it. And if he can get you to go back down that familiar road, we'll deal with it again. And we'll deal with it again. And we'll say, that's it. I quit. I mean it. And we don't mean it. Because we keep going down it. Anybody ever been on a diet? <laughs> How's that working out for you? Because <laughs> we do it for a while. But then we have something we call a cheat day. And then it turns into uh -oh. my cheat week. Uh -oh. And then it turns into my cheat month. And then I had three cheat years. Okay, but now I'm back on. <laughs> And the reason we have difficulty with it is because it takes so much discipline. Mm -hmm. Temptation is just like that. Only you've been given the blood, which is unfair mm -hmm. to the devil. You've got to call out for the blood. You've got to speak about the blood. You've got to hang on to the blood. Because the blood actually is there. This is one of the attributes of the blood. It cleanses you from unrighteousness. Amen. Number two. You have been given climate control through the blood. Now let me explain. You've been given climate control. Does anybody know what the normal body temperature is? 98.6. Not 98.7. Not 96.4. 98.6. Why do you think that's normal? Hmm. God said it. God said it. He set it into motion. It's into motion. He set this into motion. It's like this. And you know why the body stays at a uh -huh. specific temperature? It's the blood. <laughs> if it flows too fast, you get too hot. Yeah. If it flows too slow, you get too cold. If it doesn't flow at all, you become room temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I'm telling you the truth. It's the blood. The way it flows in your body keeps it at 98.6. And the way the blood flows through your body is the way His blood flows through you. It's at a specific temperature. It's at a specific time. It goes at a specific speed. The reason it does that is called climate control. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is there for climate control. In Matthew 24... It says in verse 12, And because iniquity shall abound, it says the love of many will wax cold. Iniquity makes your spiritual body get colder, like dead. Mm. Wow. I bet you didn't think of that before. It says you're going to wax cold, but the real Greek says cold as in ice. Cold. Yeah. Your body's going to wax cold. When sin comes in, you set yourself up to let your blood slow down because the power of His blood can't wash away that because you keep entertaining that thing. Right. That's why He wants you to get rid of sin. And when you have zeal of the Lord, the Bible says, you are on fire. Right. Whoa. You know how you get your b blood to flow better? Get on fire for the Lord. Then the zeal of God starts moving through at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. And he takes iniquity and goes, get out of here. Because mm -hmm. right. the zeal of the Lord. You, can, you know when people are on fire for the Lord. Yeah. They come in and they're talking about God. They're talking about Jesus. They're bringing out their Bible. They're sharing things. And you go... They're just on fire for the Lord. It'll calm down. It'll calm down. <laughs> but that zeal for the Lord brings heat. Right. It brings the heat of God. Mm -hmm. Now, number three. There's a power plant. 
in the blood. There's a power plant in the blood. The blood of Jesus is the hidden power plant to energize God's word in your life. It energizes his word. You know, sometimes we read the word and we say, you know, God will provide all my needs. We go like this. My God will provide all my needs. My God will provide all my needs. My God will provide all my needs. We think if we say it long enough that somehow it's going to get into us by osmosis. My God will provide all my needs. I appreciate folks that say it again and again because you're trying to get it from your head to your heart. But the way you energize the words of your mouth, the way you energize is the power plant of the blood. He's already given you the blood. And because his blood flows in your veins, it's given to you so that you can exercise the word backed up by the power of the blood. Mm-hmm. And now you've got the power plant working on your behalf. As the words come out of your mouth, you say it by the blood of the Lamb. You say it by the blood of Jesus. You say it in that manner and suddenly it gives your words different power because the power plant is operating on your words. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, it energizes you. In Hebrews 10 and verse 19, it says it like this. Hebrews 10, 19. Having, therefore, brethren, boldness. In the Greek, it says power. Having, therefore, boldness, power, to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus. Are you kidding me? You got power to, you got the power by the blood? That's what it says. You got a power plant, a hidden power plant. You got the power by the blood. Ooh, glory. You got power by the blood. Glory to God. God's (laughs) word goes to work when you use the blood. Now, number four. Number four. You got an emergency first aid kit in the blood. There's an emergency first aid kit. Just as the blood naturally flows through your body, looking for anything that's not of God, it's trying to get there to heal it. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever had a wound? Let's say you cut your finger. Ever had a wound? Cut your finger? Do you ever notice what happens on that wound? It just bleeds and bleeds and bleeds and bleeds. Or, does it ever stop bleeding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How? How to stop? It's called coagulation. Mm -hmm. Why does it coagulate? To heal. Yes. Is there any? Is there any other reason why it? How does it? (laughs) How does it coagulate? Anybody know how it coagulates? We're going to get there. But how does it coagulate? It thickens. Do you know that the word relationship is the word coagulate in the Greek? Really? It heals by relationship. It heals by coagulation. It gets thick. You ever heard blood is thicker Mm -hmm. than water? That's how his blood works. It's thicker. Than water, and when it gets real thick, it grabs a hold of one another, oh, yeah. and it begins to tighten and grasp a hold. It makes what is called a scab, mm-hmm. and it's because it's all little blood cells that have dried one upon the other, and they won't let anything else get in. And they're there to heal that thing. Just like the blood of the Lamb. They grab a hold of you and won't let anything else in. And I'm here to make sure you get healed. That's good. That's amazing. (laughs) That's how he works on you. So that he just focuses on anything that's not right and make it right by the blood. Yeah. Ooh. That's how your blood works. Yeah. It's there to make sure you get healed. It won't let impurities get in your body. It's there to stop all unrighteousness. Glory. It's just a good thing to know. There's an emergency repair kit in your blood. (laughs) It's there because when you're in a spiritual crisis, you need to know it's the blood of the Lamb that's there to heal you. It's the blood of the Lamb that's there to rescue you. It's the blood of the Lamb that's there to bring you first aid. Mm -hmm. It's the first aid kit from God. Amen. 
Amen. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 again, it says, And they overcome him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You were made to overcome the devil, to stop his work, to get him off of you. You, you've been made so that you can stop his work. Number five. Number five. The blood is there to constantly patrol your buddy. The blood is there to constantly patrol your buddy, your body. Now, the blood has tiny microbes in it. They're there specifically to get down to the little tiniest crevice of down through every capillary. It's got to flow to the very edge, even up to the skin. You've seen, if you take off one tiny layer, it's like, well, I didn't see too much. Then all of a sudden, blood starts creeping out. Wait, but what have that, that? I just had a piece of paper tear me apart there. And all of a sudden, blood comes out. Because mm-hmm. the blood is in the tiniest capillaries all the way to the edge. Right. And you say, I don't see any capillaries there. It'll even flow where the capillaries are not. That's right. It's there to flow through every inch That's how, of your body. That's how God healed you. He did. Through the capillaries. He healed me completely. I had suffered a devastating stroke. I was sent home to die. But the blood... <laughs> It went through my body and rebuilt structure all the way to my brain. It grabbed a hold of my brain and said, no, we got a lot more to do. And it began to, I for a while I couldn't think. I couldn't think straight. Come on, don't ever say that I can't think straight. That I, I was there. And it's no party. It's no picnic. But when it, my capillaries began to grow and my whole brain started working, I tell you what, and I could read again. Things changed. I said, I know I've been where, hey, that was a crossing point for me forever after I am changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will follow him. I'll do whatever he said to do. Uh, There's a crossing point right there. Amen. Amen. Now, the blood is there to constantly patrol your body. Your blood has tiny microbes in it that constantly attack sickness, disease, and listen to this, even weakness. Right. People say, well, I'm tired. I'm so tired. What they're saying is, I haven't had a chance to let my blood circulate properly. Mm. You know that when the blood doesn't circulate properly, they tell you, you just got poor circulation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You should never be like that with the Lord. Poor blood circulation. His blood was meant to go through every part, every portion. We, in our bodies, we don't recognize how we've been made like God. Why did Jesus come and take on one of these bodies? So he could know exactly what we were dealing with. God already made all this. He made it to happen just in such a way. And we need to respond to that blood. It's the same manner on this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We flow in that blood of Christ. We live by His blood. Ooh, amen. <laughs> we live and we have a constant patrol by His blood. You've got to comprehend the fullness of the power of the blood working in you all the time. Hebrews 13, it gets to verse 12 and says it like this. And so Hebrews 13, verse 12, it says, And Jesus suffered outside the city. He suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. He already suffered outside the gate so that you could be made holy through his blood. We don't often talk about the fullness of the blood. And the Lord said, I want everybody to be reminded of the fullness of the blood and how it's supposed to work in your body. You need to recognize the fullness of the blood. We know. That if somebody goes to the hospital because they have bad blood, something's in there it's not supposed to be, it's been corrupted, it's not producing, the red cells aren't producing the way they should, the white cells are fighting each other instead of fighting off infection, and you're like, well, why would, why would that happen? Why would that happen? Because there's corruption on this earth, mm-hmm. and the curse of the law is still there, even trying to curse your blood. 
You need to call out for the curse of the law is gone in you. Jesus took that curse so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, he wants us to stand strong against all the attacks of the devil because there's a constant patrol and that patrol is there to look for anything that the devil's trying to do. Anybody ever had anything in your body and you're like, well, I don't even know what that is. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I, wish I, I want that to stop. That, that needs to stop. Yeah. You need to declare the blood on that yeah, thing, right. the blood that's of the right. lamb. Yeah. Because just because you want it to stop does not mean it has to stop. Correct. Declare the blood. Anybody ever have a child? Been around children? <laughs> Any child ever say to you, I want another cookie. Yeah. <laughs> I want another cookie. <laughs> so you just give them another one. No. There comes a point where you go, all right, eight's enough. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have any more. And the kid will probably cry and carry on and have a fit because they're used to getting their way. And the devil will cry and carry on and have a fit because he's used to getting his way mm-hmm. until you say no. Right. And mean it by the blood. Come on. That's good. Where we fail is we give in. We give in to selfish desires. We give in to lust. We give in to giving up of the fullness of the Spirit of God to meet up with something we want to do here on this earth. And there are times of relaxation. There are times of break. But never forget the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, number six. You have restoration by the blood. Restoration. Do you know your body is made in such a way the blood is there to help restore you? Right. It's there to help bring you back. The blood works furiously to try to make sure everything is functioning normal. It's supposed to function normal. You can declare this. You got to declare out of your mouth. I declare every one of my organs, my cells, my tissue, and my blood mm-hmm. function properly the way it was yes. intended to function with no malfunctions in Jesus' name. Amen. And you'll be surprised how many diseases have to flee your body. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because the blood is there doing its work, yes. making restoration in your body, mm-hmm. looking for anything that's not of God. It's there working furiously against any wound to coagulate it, Mm -hmm. to bring it into fellowship with the other cells. It's there to coagulate. The word fellowship also means to tighten, to bring together. That's fellowship. To tighten, to bring together, to stop any excess flow. It's there to help you to coagulate by the blood. Wow. You mean God made our bodies to be such a way that it's supposed to be the same way we fellowship with him? To tighten, to bring together. (laughs) Whoa, whoa. In Colossians 1 and verse 20 it says, And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Whether things are on the earth or things are in heaven, by making peace through his blood. (laughs) You mean he gave us the blood to reconcile all things. That includes your body. Whoa, praise God. And that's all the teaching for tonight.